working miracles down my way. He's sending blessings and answers along to guide my way. So if I can just believe, then surely I will receive that blessed miracle sent down to me. And when I feel the end is near, I feel the grasp of doubt and fear. Send me a miracle. Send your touch. For there's such power in your hand, Lord. And just one touch will do. I need a miracle to take me through. He's sending miracles down our way. He's sending blessings and answers along to guide my way. So if I can just believe, then surely I will receive that blessed miracle sent down to me. So if I can only believe, then surely I will receive that blessed miracle sent down to me. thank the Lord for saving me and for all that he's done for me. And he's been so good to me and I just thank you for all that he's done for us. Every morning when I wake up to see the sun, I can't help but think about the Lord and all the things he's done. He meets my every need. The Lord has sure been good to me. And I can't help but praise the Lord for all he's done. For all he's done. I'm going to lift my hands and praise him for all he's done. I'll try to live my life to please him. And even though I don't deserve to live, my life has just begun. And I can't help but praise the Lord for all he's done. Now there are many things that I could praise God for. And if I started now until I die, there'd still be many more. If I could mention only one, I'd have to thank him for his son. Now that's enough to praise the Lord for all he's done. For all he's done, I'm going to lift my hands and praise him for all he's done. I'll try to live my life to please him. And even though I don't deserve to live, my life has just begun and I can't help but praise the Lord for all he's done. Amen.
If I could own the world, it's silver and it's gold, I would gladly give it for my soul, but I have found something more. his name. Well, he specializes in bad days. He's a God of good days and good times, but he specializes in bad days. Amen. You'll remember him better by the times he's been there in them bad days. He's been, he's been there, ain't he? Oh, what a Savior we have. I'm grateful tonight to be in his house. Good to see you. Amen. I love the house of God. I love the people of God. Amen. I'm glad we're on the winning side. But we're on a battlefield. We are. And uh, we've got to make up in our mind if we're going to fight or not. And if you don't fight, you won't last. You have to fight against the enemy. Amen. We're, we'll win. And uh, the Lord don't expect you to fight alone. And, uh, but we do have to be faithful on the field Verse uh, Psalms, chapter number 37, Psalms 37. I do desire your prayers just a few moments tonight. The Lord will help us. I ask Him to help us. We need it. we got to have it. And that without it, uh, we, we're nothing. We're more than just words. And, uh, but the Spirit of the Lord's where it's at, and that's what we need. And I'm praying that God will help us. He's going to help us. Verse number one, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. 
For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. He shall bring it to pass. That's all that I want to read tonight. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful tonight, amen, for the word of the Lord. Let me just, being that you sit down, I'll just read a couple more verses right here. Amen, it's so good. I'd, sometimes it's hard to find a stopping place. He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. and Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Amen. I love, amen, the word of God. And I'm thankful, amen, for all that he's done for us. Now, if you can look, amen, at, at, at the, the way this starts out here, it says, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Now, you ain't got to look very far. Uh, to find evil doers. I mean, uh, you don't have to. If you if you watch the news, you turn it on, and uh, that's about what you see is evil doers, and uh, it's on every hand. I mean, really. And if you ain't real careful, it it it'll, it'll get you to the point to where, hey, Amen. It'll get you scared and nervous. And I'll just be honest. If you uh, if you put put your confidence in the government, you're going to be scared, hey, Amen. Because they ain't a whole lot of stability, hey, Amen. Anywhere that you look, hey, you can't get too close to the edge of nothing or it'll cave out on you but can I tell you amen Jesus is still the solid rock and he ain't going nowhere by the way amen I, I want you to look at two or three uh, words that I want to pull out here tonight if the Lord will help us in these scriptures and the first one amen there's four of them trust delight commit and then rest amen I'm thankful tonight amen if you'll do all that you can rest in the Lord amen and know that everything's going to be alright I'm not saying Amen. That the world's going to calm down. I'm going to say, and it's probably going to get worse and worse. Amen. But the Bible said all that had to happen before that He comes. So you can rest in the Lord and be assured of one thing that this is not our home and we're getting out of here. Amen. I'm thankful for what the Lord has given me. Amen. But that house up there, that house you got over yonder in Dillard Town, all that's going to go away. Amen. Over yonder in Peter's Cove and Hyde Creek. Amen. Wherever you live at tonight. Amen. Amen, everything you've got your, amen, we pay taxes on. We try to keep the roof from leaking. We do all this stuff, but it's going to go away after a while. Amen, but my new home is perfect, and it ain't never going to wear out. Amen, I'm thankful tonight. Amen, Brother Ethan and I love the Lord, and he's give us a lot. I'm thankful. I'm just following the Holy Ghost. I feel good tonight. Amen, I'm thankful that he come, and he was born over yonder in that stable. Thank God, but I'm glad he got up on Easter Sunday. Sunday, and he gone away and he said I am coming again and to receive you unto myself and where I am there you may be also I'm not looking for a house made of brick and mortar like some people think it's going to be amen it don't make no difference what he's got prepared amen when I get inside of the gate of that city it'll be mansion enough for me because there'll be no trouble there'll be no sickness no sorrow there'll be no devil on that side amen he haunts you in your sleep he he follows you everywhere you go. Amen. He's in your mind all the time. But bless the Lord, oh my soul, I'm here to tell you, he's not going inside the gates of that city. So bless his name. Don't fret yourself because of evildoers. Don't let them get you down because we're not of this world. We're of a new generation. Amen. Praise the Lord. The first thing I want to say tonight, the Bible said trust in the Lord and do good. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Amen. I wrote some of these definitions down. I can't remember nothing. Amen. Trust is a person places complete confidence and reliance in another person. Complete confidence in another person. Amen. As we come up here. And most of the time when one person wants to be anointed, I don't think I've ever just anointed that one 
and prayed and went back to the seat. You go around, buddy, everybody here, if you didn't get anointed tonight, I'd say you got something in your life that you could. Amen. As we drop that prayer cloth in the mail, uh, that little old baby over there in that hospital, that's three years old and his brain's eat up with cancer. Amen. The doctor done the surgery after we prayed, or before that we prayed, they done the surgery. He said, when it wakes up, don't expect a lot. Probably won't be able to move. Amen. One side, because all the cutting they had to do inside of its brain. But when it woke up, it's moving both sides. Amen. Doing everything me and you do. I'm telling you, thank God. I don't know. I put We put confidence in the doctors. I say I appreciate them, don't y'all? Amen. We go to the doctor. We got to have things. But I want you to know something tonight. If you're putting that, your confidence in a man with a knife to keep you alive, you're backing up, my friend. Amen. I appreciate all that they can do. But they can't give life. I said they can't give life. They ain't the one that can give life. And if you're trusting the Lord, I'm not telling you don't go to the doctor. If you ain't got no faith, I'd say you better. Amen. You may die in your tracks. But I want to say if you can trust in the Lord, hallelujah, he'll, he'll give you peace when you need it. I'm telling you, I said, Sister Mary Evelyn, amen, praying about what to do. She asked on Sunday morning, I need answers from God. Amen. I say when you put your trust in the Lord, he'll give you the right answer. I'm telling you, he may not send healing in your life, but he can give you the right answer. Amen. He'll give you grace where you need it. Amen. He's a God that'll hide you. Amen. Under his wing, he's a God. Amen. He'll put you in a cleft of the rock. He ain't never going to walk off and leave you. You can put your confidence in him. Amen. 100%. He'll never leave you and you will not be disappointed in his decision. Amen. When you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not, Proverbs said, to your own understanding. When you put your full confidence in somebody, that means you trust the decision that they give you. I'll never forget this is funny. I always thought it was funny. Brother Joe Mashburn, he was a funny outfit anyway. And he said he went to the doctor and they told him, said, You're over you need to lose some weight. You're overweight. He said, I think I need a second opinion. And so that's the way we are with God. Amen. He tells us, No, you really don't need that. Amen. God, would you give me an answer? I want to trust you. And he gives us an answer, but we want a second opinion. Amen. Now, what do you think about this, Seth? I've been praying about this. Now, what do you think about it? God's already given you the answer. It don't matter what he says. Amen. God says no. You need to take his answer as no. And don't even ask no questions about it. In our mind, amen, we want to lean to our own understanding. Now, God, you know I can handle this. Amen. It may not be that you can't, but your kids may not be able to. So when you trust in him with all your heart, the Bible said trust in the Lord and do good. Amen. So if you'll trust in him and know that regardless of whatever happens, amen, you're doing your best to live for the Lord. Amen. When you get up in the morning, whatever happens in your life, you've got to trust him that he knows it's there and he knows he'll take care of you. And if you'll trust in him, he'll show you what he can do. Amen. I'm here to tell you, you're going to have a bad days. Job said, man's born of woman a few days and full of trouble. And he said, many are the dark days. Now, if you're expecting to come to Jesus and all your dark days to go away, you come to Jesus for the wrong reason. You come to Jesus for him to wash your sins away and you glorify God. And if you really trust in him, you'll trust in what he says. And number two, you'll trust in what he does. Amen. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to lean not to our own understanding because everybody in here has quoted scripture back to God. Now God you said, now God you said, and here I stand, and you're not doing what you said you was going to do. Are we really trusting him? Are we really trusting him? Used to go to the used car car lot. They'd go get one of them dealer tags on there. I'd like to buy this car. Well, take her for a spin. Slap her on the back. I'll fed go. But go try that now if they don't know you. 
you know what they're going to do? They're going to get in there and ride with you. I don't want nobody in the car when I'm wanting to try it out because I want to gun it and turn the radio wide open. See, four-wheel drive works. Turn up the side of a hill. They don't trust you in doing what we say we'll do with most people. Come on, talk to me. So do we trust that the Lord will do what he said he'd do? Do we want our own understanding riding in the passenger's seat? And I say, now wait a minute, God. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute now. How come they're sick? How come they're sick? How come they're going through this? You said you're a healer and you ain't showed up in my house. Too many times we focus too much on that thorn when he's got a whole bucket full of grace over here that we're overlooking. So you got to trust him. You got to trust him that if you're where you're at, even though you're struggling, God's going to help you. And when you get to the other side of this, you're going to learn a lesson that I couldn't teach you. Now don't jump off that, Jeremiah. You'll get hurt. Get down off that ladder. I'm talking about way up on the ladder. Get off or you're going to get hurt. Get down, stop, quit, stop, stop, quit. Go, don't, don't, go. That's all he ever hears from me. Quit, get down, slow down, quit, get out of here, quit, go, then get out from under there, quit. I'm talking about him. Because if I just let him do his own thing, he probably wouldn't be with us today. He's crazy. He come, the nurse came in there the other day and they give him that dopey medicine before they took him out to do surgery. And he's in another world like this. And the nurse come in there with her mask on and said, what's Santa Claus? What do you want for Christmas? They don't know nothing about Santa Claus. They, don't, they look at him like, what are you talking about? So they said, what do you want for Christmas? And he looked at her and said, a shotgun. And I said, I guess your next question is, have you got any thoughts of hurting yourself? I said, we're country people, and that's what we do. Amen. But you can't, even though he wants a shotgun and he's got, he's got guns, but do you think I'm going to turn him loose with it? No, I don't trust him with it. It's untelling what he would shoot with that thing. Amen. Can I say, God, just because you think you can handle some things in your life, amen, your pout, stick your lip out, amen, complain to God, amen, but it don't matter how much he complains to me, I'm going to put the gun up a little higher because I don't trust him. I don't trust him. And when God, if you trust God to make your decisions for you, then if it's out of reach for you, you just know it ain't quite time yet. It don't mean it ain't going to let you have it in a little while. But amen, but he may not be able to trust you yet. So you just keep walking and trust in him. And when he can trust in you, then he may let you have it. Hallelujah. I guarantee you Joe has got a gun cabinet full of guns. He'll let them kids have one of these days, but he ain't going to let them have them now. If he does, I'm not going around down there. Trust in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Take pleasure in him. I love what one fellow said about another certain fellow. He said he's always got his hand like this. And he's never got it like this. He's always wanting something. But he's never given nothing. But when you delight yourself... In somebody. You don't, I don't go home to my wife just because I know she's going to cook me a meal. I go home. I told her going down the road today, and I don't care what y'all think. We're 20, we've been married 25 years, and I look at her, and I said, I take you so for granted sometimes. But sometimes it just dawns on me. You're mine, and I'm so happy you are. And I love coming home and getting a cup of coffee and sitting in the chair beside her and just holding hands. Sometimes we don't say nothing, but I delight in our relationship. Not because of I think I'm going to get something, but I just like being around her. <laughs> Sometimes, Brother Homer, have you ever seen anybody that will come to the altar when they want something? They get all religious to the pastor when they want something. And when they get it, where'd they go, man? They text me every day telling me their whole life problems and giving me a list of everything going on. And then when they get it, 
Have you changed your number? Hello, have you changed your number? Never get a response. But when you delight in the Lord... Come on, talk to me. When you could delight in the Lord. Amen. When God is a God on the mountain, we come in the back of the church praising the Lord. When we're on the bottom and things is going on, we may not be praising the Lord, but we're still here. Amen. I'm not here thinking I'm going to get a, amen. God's going to pour out blessings upon my head. God's been good enough to me. He don't have to ever give me anything else. He's been so good. Somebody said, what do you want for Christmas? I said, not one thing. I don't need anything. And can I? I get a witness tonight. Ain't nobody needs anything. God's been better than good to us. We'll get, amen, we'll get things under the tree that we really don't need, but we get them because somebody wanted to give them to us. And God's been better than that to us. He's given us life everlasting. He saved our soul. We are to delight in Him. Be happy to be a Christian. Amen. Don't argue with your convictions. Just walk in holiness and be proud to do it. Amen. Don't do it because I said do it because you love him and when you love him it's a joy to serve the Lord amen when you delight yourself in the Lord I promise you amen that I won't have to come looking for you Aiden and Micaiah they miss two Sundays a month and I know why because that's to work but the rest of the time I'm going to expect you here If your seat's missing, if your seat's missing, if your seat's missing, something's wrong. Because I've been around you long enough to know that you delight yourself in the Lord. When I pulled in tonight, I'm never early. I was about 10 minutes early tonight. Pulled in, and I thought, something's wrong. John and Shonda's not here. Now, this fella gets up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I said, did you ever know Ronnie and Dorothy? And I hope you all are watching. I love you. Every service, Ronnie would sleep through the whole service. Every service. I told John, if I was you, I'd slip back there. If I'd get my head on the back of that pew, and if you go to sleep, I won't say a word. But thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being faithful. Delight yourself in the Lord. I said, delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. These people in here got so many blessings in your life that the world would kill to have. And the Lord has just given it to you. And it ain't really all that big a deal. It's not that you don't appreciate it, but you delight yourself in Him and He's the main priority and all these other things has just been added to you. There's a lot of things that you have you don't deserve and you ain't even paid for or worked for. God has just given it to you. And there's a lot of things that you desire in your life. And when you delight yourself in Him, your desires are different than the world's are. Amen. I'll, you pray, but you really don't think they'll ever get saved or you'll ever see them sitting beside you on the pew or none of that stuff. You delight yourself also in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. The next thing is commit thy way unto Him. Commit thy way unto him. The Bible said that he showed his acts unto the children of Israel but his way unto Moses. So you know by, you've been around me enough now you probably know my way. <laughs> it takes a lot of people might know my acts because I tell them this is what I do. But my family and some of y'all know my way. I know how my wife will react under certain circumstances. I know how you react if somebody drives five miles an hour in front of you. That's your way. Homer, I've been with you in traffic jams. He likes to run 80. And when we hit a traffic jam going to revival, he's a different person. Hey, listen, Jesus saves you. He molds you and makes you. But way down deep in there, we still got a way. <laughs> Amen. I know people that's been adopted into families and they try to keep it quiet and don't ever tell them. But their way is who their parents was. Come on, talk to me. But if you commit that way, 
It's okay to tell Jesus, I've got a problem with anger. It's okay to tell him, I've got a problem with jealousy. You've got to commit them ways unto him. You've got to, whatever it is in your life that you've got a problem with, you can commit your way unto him. And when you commit that way unto him, hey, so many times, see, you see the best side of me. You're at the church house. This is your best side. But go home with me and you'll find out my way. But you can commit those ways unto him. And if you do that and trust in him, commit thy way unto him then you can rest in Him. And when you rest in Him, then whatever comes your way, you can have true peace in knowing everything is going to be okay. It don't make no difference what the outcome that you, when you lean on your own understanding, it, you'll never understand God's ways. Because His ways are higher above your ways. And His ways are past finding out. But if you commit thy way unto him, what's the rest of that scripture? Commit thy way. I know this is different the way I would normally preach, but this is what God told me to do. If we trust in him and delight in him and commit our ways unto him, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. He had went back to trust, you see. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. What, what, what's it? I don't know. You tell me. The still small voice come to the man in the cave, and we all want to figure out what that still small voice said. It was exactly what that man needed is what it said. And then don't, don't try to figure it out. It's what he needed. And if you'll do all those things, you can listen in the stillness of the night sometimes and he'll speak to you. And you can rest in the Lord that everything's going to be all right. My sister, you've heard me say this as he begins to play. My sister had cancer a few years ago. and I think it was, I don't remember how many surgeries it was in one year. Bunches of them. She was just down one night praying. I said, Lord, I need, I need help. I need you to, I need to know. You know, sometimes, like you said, Sister Sunday, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know. Sometimes we need God to talk to us. Am I, am I talking to anybody? Sometimes we need to know which direction to go in. This is what she heard when she got down on her knees. It's going to be all right. That's all she heard. So you can bank on that, friend. If he says don't turn right, don't turn right. You can bank on whatever's down there right you don't need, and I don't know what it is, and it don't matter. But if he says it's going to be all right, it's going to be all right. So trust in him. Delight in him. Commit your way unto him, and then you can rest in him. When you lay down tonight, your world may be in a whirlwind, but you can lay down with peace in your heart knowing, God, here I am. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but you're going to have to take care of me. And I trust you in knowing that whatever happens will be the right thing. Let's all stand.